mate and his two kids have come up from Napier and they want me to show them some of the fishing we Jaffers are always raving about. I will also share some top tips for targeting Hauraki Golf Snapper. Oh, it's a big fish, that's a big one. Oh, it's a beauty! So the pressure is on for me to perform and show that fighting oh, spirit that makes us Aucklanders. We also go for a scallop dive off Tyra, and Darren gives his youngest son Griffin a few pointers on hunting fish. The Hauraki Gulf is a wonderful place. It is absolutely chock full of fish, and Auckland is a sensational place to fish. Now, if I sound like your standard Jaffa, it's probably because I am. But what we've done today is I've got one of the guys from Profile Boat, Steve, and his two kids come up, and they wanted to check out Auckland and see if the fishing is really as good as what we talk about. So we're here to prove a point, and we're here to also show you some of the techniques that we use around Auckland to catch some of our fantastic fish. It's school holidays, it's uh, early October, and this is the time when the fish are really schooling up, one of the best times to fish around Auckland. So we're out in the middle of the Hauraki Gulf. We're probably going to fish two or three spots over, over a couple of days just to show you, Steve, the variety that's available in Auckland. But first of all, we're going to go and fish under some workups and see if we can't get these young fellas here into some fish. Adam's always talking it up about how good the fishing is up here in Auckland, so we've come up on the holidays to check it out. So hopefully we can catch a few snapper today. Yeah, Adam's always talking it up. I don't think we'll get that much, but I hope we get some snapper. Luckily, the pressure to perform was off pretty quickly, with the boys hooking up straight away. These kids had obviously done a fair bit of fishing, as their skills were good. You could tell by the way they handled the tackle and the fish when they landed them. These are all good skills that you can only learn from experience. The boys were working the fish hard. It does take a bit of effort to land a scrappy snapper when you're fishing in 40 odd metres of water. Tell me what's going on. Oh, it's taking line, that's for sure. Nice strong fish. You gonna outgun your dad, mate? Yeah, definitely. Both Keegan and Jake were very comfortable in the way they moved around the boat. These kids had obviously been taught good boat skills by their dad. So we've got a double hook up. The young fellas are showing Dad how it's done. I'm on holiday. <laughs> Steve's fishing skills were a bit suspect compared to his boys. Don't wind anymore. That's enough winding. But at least he could net the fish. The Black Magic Inferno Braid was very high visibility, making it easy to see where the fish were heading but that didn't stop the fish crossing lines as they got close to the boat. When this happens, if you can't uncross the lines, simply net the fish and untangle them afterwards. Try not to put too much pressure on cross lines, as the friction may burn the lines, causing a bust off. was our first drop of the day. The young fellas got a fish each. Dad couldn't quite muster one first time up, but he got a bite. So yeah, that's the first drop. I think we've impressed them with Auckland already. Mm, my line's drifted a bit back, and I'm not getting any bites. Or, yeah, just seems like a good fish on Keegan's rod. Unbelievable. Take the boys fishing, and this is what happens. I'm getting my butt kicked by a couple of young fellas. Unreal. Thought you were the best. Day's not over yet, boys. He's always saying that on the oak. Yeah, well, I don't know if you'll catch any eat, eat. I don't actually think you'll catch one. So far. The second drop was as good as the first and the boys were hooked up again. Steve and I still hadn't managed to connect to a fish and the boys were starting to get cocky and talking plenty of smack. Caught up with your dad. Another one, boys. How's a good test? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Took a while to bring in. 
The calm seas started to rough up as the wind picked up. This did not bother the boys or the fish. What do you think you've got, Jack? It's a leather. Oh, that's good. Is it white there? Yep. Yeah. Got to whack it. If you're going to whack it, don't hold the line like that. Just let the weight come off. And with a bit of quick coaching, Steve managed to get a hook up. Yep, I'm on, boys, I'm on. Told you it'd be the biggest one of the day, too, so look at that. Look at this thing compared to yours. He's giving it a good hard fight, that's for sure. He's doing well. I'm impressed with the skills, actually. It's quite good. This, this will be my third snapper of the day. Hopefully. Dad's only caught one undersized fish. And same with Adam. It must be that rod, I think. No, it's not the rod, it's the technique. Coming up, we go out to get a feed of scallops and Darren shares his experience with his son Griffin. For me, a day out with a group of young people helps to rekindle the spirit and make me slow down and smell the roses. Things I've come to take for granted. I stop with the kids, enjoy, and remember the first time I experienced what they are. Summertime is a great time to slow up and do something with your family. Try snorkeling, it's easy. We are never far from the coast anywhere in New Zealand and fish life is reasonably abundant in most areas. My dive mates today are Sean, Harry, Jackson and Griffin, my son. Harry, Sean and Jackson are eager to show me their scallop spot. It's around six metres deep and the scallops are very abundant here. You have to look for a semi-round circle in the sand like this. If you swim too fast, it's easy to miss them. Jackson shows us how it's done. See how the scallop is hidden in the seagrass? You have to look very carefully when they are hidden in this type of country. Sean's found a few. He's diving well. He's a self-taught diver. At 13 he's better than some adults I've dived with. One thing I did mention though was to slow down his movements. Moving fast uses up too much oxygen. This is what I'm talking about when I say slow down and smell the roses. I've seen hundreds of thousands of leather jackets and generally take no notice of them, but watch how this one changes colour as he swims onto the sand. Amazing. Nature has many interesting things to experience if you just take the time to watch. Sean's got another handful. Won't take long at this rate to get a good feed. Remember to check the size and number you are allowed for your area. Ignorance is not an excuse. Sean hands the bag to Harry as Jackson looks on. This is a safe way to dive. The heavy bag stays on the surface and your mates keep a watchful eye on you. Great teamwork. If Sean had gotten to difficulty, his mates were right there to help him.
These are nice scallops. Even though we measured them in the water, we're doing a double check in the boat for size and number. The Weddy Scallop Bag with a built-in measure on the handle is perfectly designed to make this process quick and easy. Sparing a feed would be next, but first there are a few species we don't target. Red Moki are slow growing and very easy to wipe out. Black angelfish are virtually non-edible, and as you can see, there are beautiful reef fish better left alone. Marble fish, or married chief as they are known, are like eating old boots. Best left to observe and take photos of them. On our hunt we came across power. They're too small. They have to measure 125 millimetres across the shell. These crows are babies as well, don't even try taking them. Often fish hide in behind big boulders like this for protection. This koharu is missing the top of his tail. They make great sashimi. Griff takes aim. Lucky I'm here to reload. This koharu is proving very evasive. It takes a few shots for Griff to get his eye in. Eventually, this tasty butterfish falls prey to Griff's spear. Butterfish love this kelp. are placing their fish in our little catch boat. This is to make them easy to tow back to the boat and also stop sharks taking an interest in you or your catch. Another few shots and Griff nails a blue mau mau. These are great smoked. The little catch boat is getting a workout. You have to be careful not to pull the back underwater. They are not a buoyancy device. Used properly, they're invaluable. Griff's getting deadly with the shots now. Make sure you get a good grip on your fish when handling them. I've seen many fish lost off spears due to the diver being too casual. Griff has a practice on getting down to the power. At 11 years old, there's so much for him to learn and experience. He's having a blast. We've got enough fish now. The rest of the day is spent enjoying the sights. All the diving today has been done in less than six meters or 18 foot of water. Give it a go, your kids will love it. Coming up, the fish are biting their heads off and we share some top tips for snapper fishing. Well, yeah, I came out here to show these guys what the Hauraki Gulf was all about. The boys are, are catching fish so thick and fast, Steve and I honestly can't pick up a rod because they're just on, 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 take the fish off and they're down and they're on again. And I'm pointing the camera as well. It's just, you know, it's all go. And it's, it's a bit breezy. And as if you notice that with the boys and me and Steve, 
we've all got our life jackets on. And that's a really, you know, you, you make your call with life jackets. The first important thing is you always have a life jacket for everybody on the boat. But then you, you think about the conditions and it's a bit joggly and we're, we're bouncing around a bit. So we put a life jacket on because if anyone does unexpectedly fall overboard, we're covered, we're safe. And, you know, it, it's, it's about using your common sense. And the number of people that are getting into trouble in the water and they're, they're dying because they don't have life jackets on. It's not hard. If it's flat calm and you know you're safe, it's good. You're rocking around, put your life jacket on. It doesn't interfere with your fishing and it's just common sense when you're boating. The fishing was red hot. Every lure that went down got smacked as soon as it hit the bottom. These were good quality fish and typical of the Hauraki Gulf Snapper. The average fish is around two kilos with larger fish in the four to nine kilo bracket turning up pretty regularly. like a good one Keegan, yeah. he's feeling your back nicely. Good technique though mate, put some wine this way. This will be my second snapper. Then me and Jake will be draw. Just gotta try and keep the tension up. Well, I guess Adam was right about the fishing. It's awesome here. It's just brilliant. You get a fish every five minutes or so, just depending on where you are. But no matter what, you probably come out and get a feed. It's great. And it's fun. It's awesome. This is phenomenal. We've been here about 20 minutes. We've got four beautiful snapper on board already. Keegan's on again. This is just magical. Absolutely magical. Oh, that's a better fish. Oh, that was great. Awesome fight. It's, it's an awesome fish. Did it get double hooked? Dead. Yeah. And um, just was going down and I felt some bites and then I started winding. Yeah. Hopefully it's a good one. And this one, Adam said that this is one that catches a big one and definitely biting well. Unbelievable, the little buggers are on both at the same time. I think Keegan's got quite a nice fish too. He had a decent whack when it came on, so get it in here and let's have a look. This one's putting up quite a big spider. I'm pretty sure it's a car way by the door. Snap it. Totally above us. Back of What's say we let that one go, eh? Yeah. It's a bit undersized by the looks. We're four on at once. Adam had to go and get the camera to um, get Keegan's fish, but we all had one on each, so that's four strikes and straight away. Yeah, I can see yours. Oh, that's a big oh, fish. That's a big one. Holy crap! Oh, that's a beauty! Keegan, go over! I can't hold on, Jay. Leave it there. Yeah. We've got dolphins around us. Now that's a snapper. Look at that baby. There's my line. Good boy. There was awesome there. We all had fish on. And it was a four way, we all got it all on board. Uh, yeah, I'm on again, just as I got down. Keegan got a beauty, so did I, so did Adam, and so did Dad. They were all beauties, especially Keegan's. I'm getting worn out winding all of these fish in. 
I <sighs> hope this is a big one. I got the, I can see some colour. Well, fellas, that was a pretty awesome fishing session, eh? Yep. Yeah, definitely. Is that the best snapper fishing you've ever had? Yeah, yeah probably. Probably. Well, what I thought, we've come into a nice quiet bay. We're going to take a couple of photos of you guys with your fish because you've done so well. But I thought I'd just share the little tricks about fishing what we did out there because you guys fish from Napier. But we've got a few tricks that we use up here in Auckland to catch our fish. Now, the first trick I want to tell you is how we found the fish. Did you work that one out? Uh, yeah, the uh, birds diving. Birds diving, but also the other really important trick, although there was birds diving, we looked at our sounder because you know at the first spot yeah. we went to, there was fish in the middle of the water, but there was nothing on the bottom. And what did you guys catch? Kawa. That's right, and the snapper on the bottom. So we used our sa sounder to identify where the fish were and where the snapper were. That's the other thing. Now secondly, the lures. When we started fishing with the lures, you guys haven't done a lot of that lure fishing. First off, we started with, we put uh, Jake on a standard soft bait and he caught a fish straight away, but it was really calm. But then when that wind started blowing, this wasn't getting to the bottom. So we changed to two sorts of heavier lures. Yeah. This one's called a Nchiku jig, or we call it a Daiwa pirate jig. Okay? okay. And they go down and they can fish behind the boat, but they're quite a bit heavier than this. Yeah. So it got to the bottom. Yeah. And the other one, which you caught all your big fish on, yeah. it's called a Cyclops rig with a paddle tail. And see how much that stretches? Oh, and you got some out. awesome bites on that. And see how it's got a nice heavy head. Yeah. So that was the trick to get down when the wind started blowing. Yeah. The other trick, did you see what we put out the side of the boat? Yeah, yeah. The... Sea anchor. Yeah. And that slowed the boat right down so we could get to the bottom. Now the other trick, we centered our lures with Secret sauce. And did that work or what? Yeah. Did you notice when we put a little bit of fresh stuff on? Yeah. Bang, bite straight away. Now, when you're fishing, there was also some tricks to hook in the fish, eh? Yeah. Yep. What we use a lot, this line is called fluorocarbon line. And what that means, it looks like normal line, but in the water, the fish can't see it. And we only use fairly light line, it's like 30 pound. Normally yeah. when you're snapper fishing you might use 50, 60 pound, but this is 30 pound fluorocarbon. So the fish can't see it, so it's very low visibility. And the other trick, the rods and reels we're using, did you notice how light they were? Yeah. Yeah, but they're really powerful. Yeah. And on there is the braid line so you feel all the bites. But it's really important to have a really sensitive rod and then you feel every little twitch. Yeah. Right? So that's how we hook the fish. But once we hook the fish, the biggest tip I gave you, do you know what it was? Don't let it go slack. That's right, you got it. Because when they were striking the fish, and we'll probably show you a little demo here, when they were striking the fish, they'd strike it and drop the rod forward. And quite a number of times, they had fish on and they fell off because they dropped forward. Normally when you strike a fish, you wind and keep the rod tight. And you guys sorted that out pretty quick. Because my young mate, Jake here, Jake the Snake we call him, he was just hauling fish in. At one stage, he got five in a row on five drops. And they're all beauties. So you guys have done really well. I reckon we should just take a couple of photos, go home and fillet some fish. What do you reckon? Yep. Cool. Sweet ass. Good tips? Yep. yep. Good on you, mate. You guys fished really well. I was impressed with your skills. Thanks. Thanks. Better than your dad, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs>